I'm here at the International Conference on Robotics and Automation, the world's largest robotics conference, which this year has come to London. Four-legged robots from Boston Dynamics, we've got Unitrees robot, we've got humanoid robots, assistance robots, every sort of robot you can imagine. You might be wondering what these robots are doing right now. It looks like they're just playing a game of chess, but this robot on my left is being controlled by a human in a suit over there, and this robot on my right is being controlled by a human over there. They both have uh, feedback gloves, they have VR headsets, and they're seeing everything that the robot sees. Now, specifically today, we're looking at avatars, robot avatars to be precise. They can play chess, but they can do much more. They can perform maintenance, rescue operations, and do anything that a human can do with its hands and eyes. We built a robot that is easy to control for a human and the human feels as if the, the robot was their own body. There's many applications, for example, in healthcare, remote assistance, um, there's also disaster response in dangerous situations, um, also connecting people closer together. As I put on the VR headset, I began to see what a future of human-controlled robots might look like. I knew the robot body I was inhabiting wasn't my own, but I couldn't help but feel that part of me, as I looked back on my human body, was the robot. Wow. Nice to be back in my own body. How do you feel? It's amazing how responsive it is. Like, I, I really, like, obviously I had a bit of trouble with the chess set, but I was able to sort of pick things up and move things, and yeah, it, it felt like I could do almost anything that I could as a human. It's still strange, even for me, especially if I see myself in the operator station through the avatar. The reason it's exciting for us is because we can learn from humans that control the robotic system, and then the robot gets smarter and can do things on, the, on, on its own. For example, picking up a drill using a device. Um, these are things that humans do intuitively, um, but it's very hard for robots to match. And uh, if you can just imitate what, what humans do, but with the limitation of the robot, then that brings us forward in robotics. One way that robots are being used currently in the real world is at places like the UK Atomic Energy Authority. They are the government agency that manages power plants across the UK in high radiation environments. They have a robot that uses robotic grippers like this to perform maintenance and perform tasks inside the reactor where humans can't go. Using this setup behind me, which is a bit like a flight simulator, they are training new operators for this robotic arm. The exciting thing about avatar control these days is that now that VR technology has come to where it is, you get really, really high resolution and fidelity in the VR headset. And the robots are at a level now where they can be precision control using regular Wi-Fi. You can, you can now start deploying robots uh, and androids into applications where, the, you, where you don't want the human to be present. So Eve is a humanoid robot, uh, so it like matches the embodiment uh, of a human, has two arms. I'm waving to myself in robot form. Obviously, I'm not actually in the robot, but just seeing myself and having this robot sense of self is a very strange feeling. I am in the robot, part robot, part human. I'll give the uh, camera a little wave there. Currently, the commercial application is physical security in the US. And in that application, the robot does autonomous patrols. That includes um, opening doors and riding elevators. Uh, and then it, uh, when needed, it can hand over control to a human. The human can uh, assess the situation through the eyes of the robot, solve the, the, um, the, the issue, and then move on. In five years, I expect when you, when you go to Heathrow Airport, you'll see and, uh, androids um, doing um, many tasks. In 10 years, I think it, it would also be in elder care, so uh, elderly people living at home will have um, uh, robots helping them at home or androids. Um, and then 
the, the step be beyond that, which is the robots in every consumer's home, I don't want to put a date to that, but that, uh, that will come later, I think. Behind me is Amica, a humanoid robot designed to look as much like and speak as much like a human as possible. It might be a while before we see robots like Amica in the home, but as we've seen today, humanoid robots and robotic avatars are getting closer and closer to real world use. Not to mention robotic dogs, flying robots, underwater robots, robots used in nuclear maintenance, used in search and rescue, used for all sorts of tasks. It'll be a while before we see something like Amica in the home, but it might not be too long before we see something a little less lifelike helping you out with everyday tasks. Mm -hmm.